Good evening. Welcome to St. Joseph's. Thank you for coming to Holy Mass this evening, where we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. This is the last Sunday of Ordinary Time before we begin uh, Lent in a few days. So after this evening, we say goodbye to the Gloria, the Alleluia, and a lot of the instrumental ornamentation. Please stand now for the hymn. <clears throat> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone. Let us together, as the family of God, turn to Jesus Christ our Savior. And as we first call to mind our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for with 
pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or a pustule or a blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If a man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments red and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know how much you know about leprosy. I really didn't know a whole lot about it, so I decided to do a little bit of research. Of course, you can Google anything and find just about anything on the internet, including lots of heart-wrenching YouTube videos. But medically speaking, leprosy is referred to in modern terms as Hansen's disease. I learned that it's caused by a type of bacteria, but apparently only about 5% of people Uh, infected with this bacteria will develop the disease. Because the bacteria that causes leprosy thrives in cool places and cool areas of the body such as the skin, that's why it can lead to deformations of the hands and the feet, facial features, the extremities. Fortunately, it's been curable since about the 1940s and people that are treated are no longer contagious. But for the Israelites of the Old Testament times, leprosy took on a whole different kind of reality. It was a disease that would render somebody unclean. And what they meant by unclean wasn't like physically dirty or something of that nature, but rather it was a a religious sort of uncleanness as in the person, because of this disease, was not worthy to come before the all-pure God in worship. 
but it meant that neither could they be part of the Israelite community as such. And so they found themselves really outside the community because of leprosy, kind of living in the wild, um, ragged clothes, kind of on the fringes of society. And as we heard in our first reading today, what a person would have to do is call out unclean, unclean, to warn somebody coming, lest they come in contact with them and also be stricken with leprosy as well. Well, it was hoped somehow that these people would somehow someday be cured, but in the meantime, they lived this life of really profound abandonment and isolation. Well, in our gospel today, as we heard, Jesus was approached by a man with leprosy. It's important to note right away what Jesus doesn't do. He doesn't go running away, afraid to be in contact with this person. He doesn't say, get away from me, you leper. Rather, he allowed this man, wounded not only by the disease itself, but by the isolation and abandonment that psychologically and emotionally he endured, and he allowed him to come closer. And Jesus listens to his prayer for healing. If you wish, you can make me clean. And we hear precisely what Jesus does. He stretches out his hand, he touches the man, and instantly he is cured from this leprosy, a true miracle. And of course, you could imagine the gossip after it was just tremendous. You know how things are in small towns like Danville, I mean Galilee, right? Did you see what Jesus did? He just touched a leper. Too bad. Now he's unclean. Oh, wait. He's healed. What does this mean? What it means is that love reaches out. It goes outside of itself, and it touches others. Love doesn't run away out of fear or because some type of uncomfortability. It reaches out. And Jesus, love incarnate, touches this man who's ostracized from society, risking ostracizing himself. But real love doesn't count the cost. You know, on this weekend, of course, we celebrate Valentine's Day. And we celebrate, of course, love. But not the commercialized imposter that kind of sells us on this, if I receive a box of chocolates, then I can feel these warm fuzzies thing we call love. But really self-sacrificing love. Love that sacrifices for the other, that puts the other first. Think of a husband and a wife sacrificing in love for one another, not just in the good times, but especially in the bad. Or I think about parents and their children, parents sacrificing to have to correct their children rather than trying to be their friend. Do you see what Jesus did for us on the cross? That's real love. It cost him. He paid the price so we could have eternal life. Real love goes outside of itself. It goes out of its way. Therefore, the body of Christ, the church, is to be a place where all are truly welcome. But not a welcome where we say sin is okay or where we stay stuck in the misery of our sins or or where we wallow in this kind of like self-pity because of the past. Mm -mm. Our divine physician doesn't want us to have to sweep all of our sins under the carpet or just kind of push them down or push them out of the way or distract ourselves to death from them. No. Jesus wants us to find true healing when it comes to our sins. And so the church is a place 
for sinners who know we're sinners and are in need of God's transforming mercy and forgiveness. And in a very real way, in the healing of this man with leprosy, what Jesus does is reveal that nothing, not leprosy, not anything, is to keep someone from experiencing the healing mercy of God his Father. Of course, in an absolutely real way, sin makes all of us spiritual lepers, unclean before Almighty God not worthy to come into his presence, into his light, into his perfect love, but sinners, spiritual lepers. But many times because of that spiritual leprosy, we might wrongly think that therefore we almost need to kind of keep away from God, announce unclean, unclean. Or we might think, I'm not welcome here. Or perhaps we might think, well, maybe I just better kind of tangentially kind of sit on the outside of parish life, kind of hide a little bit. That deeper relationship stuff with God, that's for holy people. Perhaps because of some sins that you've committed or experienced in your own life, you've come to believe a lie that says something like, I'm dirty forever. God could never forgive me. People will treat me worse than lepers if they find out what I've done. You know, with such thoughts, it becomes easy to kind of live on the fringes of society, the church as society. But Jesus wants to tell us there's more. Jesus wants us to approach him, not with the fear of what he might say or if he might treat us like the Israelite community treated the lepers, but with confidence in that his mercy and love can really heal us of every sin. My friends, Jesus wants us to come to him in the sacrament of reconciliation. He wants to heal all that keeps us from experiencing in the depth of our being his Father's perfect love for us. And if you think that just can't be true for me, then what I invite you to do this week is spend some time in prayer, just talking to Jesus about this. Just ask him to heal you of that lie that I can't be forgiven. Or maybe I don't even want to be forgiven. And then allow God to give you the courage to come to confession. And allow Jesus to personally do for you, because he wants to, say, I do will it, be made clean. Your sins are forgiven. God bless you. My friends, let us now together stand and we profess the words of the Nicene Creed and pray together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With complete trust in our Heavenly Father, let us now bring our prayers before him. That all priests of Jesus Christ, the divine physician, may help all those burdened by their sins to find healing and mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation this coming Lenten season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the powerful and influential may be men and women in whose spirit there is no guile, upright of heart and resolute in their work for life and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors and medical personnel who continue the work of Jesus in their healing ministry, that the grace of his divine power may anoint their efforts to restore the sick to health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, who was moved with pity at the humble appeal of the leper, may again stretch out his hand and touch those who have asked our prayers in time of sickness or great need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those encountering fear in the midst of this pandemic, especially the people of our parish and local community, may the Prince of Peace fill them with lasting peace the world just cannot give. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, for John Battaglia, brother of parishioner Mary Petrick, who died recently, and for all the intentions in our prayer basket, as well as those we now mention in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you open our hearts to conversion and grace. Listen to our prayers and grant what we truly need through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not Lord, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. God forgives us all our sins, healing those who live in pain, saving us from final death. God fills us with goodness and love. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are is the Lord, slow to anger, rich in love. God remembers not our sins, forgiving and loving is God. Loving and forgiving. to anger, rich in kindness, laughing and forgiving are you. As heaven soar above the earth, so great the love of God for us. As far as east is from the west, the Lord takes our sins from us. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, Laughing and forgiving are you.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for our announcements this evening. As a reminder, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Mass is here at the parish will be at 6.30 a.m., 9 a.m., and 7 p.m. The distribution of ashes is a reminder of our mortality and also our need for repentance. Due to the ongoing pandemic, there will be a slight change in our practice of the distribution of ashes. This year, the sign of the cross will not be marked on our forehead as we're accustomed to. Rather, ashes will be sprinkled on the crown of our head. It's kind of a novelty for us, but actually the rest of the world imparts ashes this way. So it will be a little different, but you'll just come forward as you would normally for Holy Communion, and you'll just bow your head, and the ashes will be sprinkled on the top of your head. Also, let's see. Of course, Lent being right around the corner, I'd like to invite you to take one of the Lenten devotionals that you'll find on the radiator covers and at the exit tonight. Also in the bulletin, there's more info on how to register for the daily reflections from Dynamic Catholic that are sent right to your inbox each day of Lent, and they tie into the book that we gave away for Christmas, I Heard God Laugh. There's also information on our parish website about this, too. Next Saturday, February 20th at 10 a.m., we'll hold First Reconciliation here at St. Joseph's. Father Rosman, a diocesan priest who's fluent in American Sign Language, will be here to help with confessions that day. If someone you know or you yourself are hearing impaired, and would like to have the Sacrament of Reconciliation, that day, February 20th at 10 a.m., would be an opportunity for you or that person to do so. Finally, this weekend, of course, Valentine's Day weekend, we celebrate the World Day of Marriage. It seems like there's a World Day for something every other day, but this Sunday happens to be the World Day for Marriage. And in a world where marriages are really uh, struggling in some different ways, uh, the grace of the sacrament of marriage is so needed uh, to help couples, but also the witness of married couples is a great source of really inspiration um, to me and to the society and church at large. So what I'd like to do is offer married couples present here tonight a special blessing or those that may be watching on YouTube or TV. So if you've been married, it doesn't matter from a year to 50, 60, 70, uh, I don't know, years. Um, I'll just invite you to stand and I'd like to offer you a special blessing. Lord God and creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of these married couples so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness upon them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant. Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace, so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. It's always good to have a little pat on the back and recognition, isn't it? Would everyone please stand?
The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Saint Joseph. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voices, let us sing. Oh, praise.